Hey, and welcome to Hanging with Chrissy. Today we are going to be making lemon chicken piccata with honey balsamic roasted Brussels sprouts. This is our second video. I'm so excited to do this with you guys. What you're going to need is at least 1.5 chicken breast. You're also going to need almond flour, um, ghee. If you do not have ghee, do not worry because I am one of them. And I'm going to substitute with canola oil. And you also need garlic, um, a small onion, lemon, uh, salt, pepper, mice garlic, coconut cream, tapioca starch, as well as for the Brussels sprouts, you need Brussels sprouts, balsamic vinegar, honey, and salt, pepper, and olive oil. So let's get started. We need to preheat our oven at 425 for the Brussels sprouts. And for this recipe, you can use a regular skillet. I'm going to also be using a flat iron um, skillet, the same one that I used for the very first video. I like the way how the heat distributes very evenly, especially when it comes to browning any type of protein. So let's go ahead and get started. Preheat the oven and get that pan ready at a medium high heat. Okay. Okay, so we got our oven preheating and we got our cast iron skillet heating as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to wash the Brussels sprouts, go ahead, cut, trim them, and then we're going to slice them in half. All right, so I'm going to move this down so you can see what I will be doing. Okay, so it's very simple just to pre-wash these Brussels sprouts. I always put a colander on the bottom, dump them in. wash here and there, as so, and then that is how you pre-wash them. Okay, okay, now that we got our Brussels sprouts pre-washed, we are going to go ahead and trim them. If you've never worked with Brussels sprouts, and they're very easy to work with, I'm not gonna lie, our family is just getting used to them. So we haven't really found our favorite recipe because this is still a very new vegetable to us. But how you trim them is you cut the end off. When you do that, some of the greens are gonna come off. If so, that's fine. When it's like this, you'll cut it in half. Anything else that comes off, no big deal. Toss it in a bowl, simple. The very first time I made Brussels sprouts, I made it just like how I make all my other vegetables, which I pretty much just steam them. And um, I put these in the oven. I might have put a little bit of oil on it. Oh my God, it was awful. Brussels sprouts to me definitely need to be seasoned. So on the second time I made them, I did like a stove top, um, a stove top honey and some other stuff and they came out much better so this one's almost the same except it has the balsamic vinegar so i'm really curious how this is going to come out so as you can see some of the leaves do come off don't freak out that's just how they work put it in the bowl once we do that we are going to put them on a pan and drizzle it drizzle it with olive oil all right, so we're getting down to our last Brussels sprout. As you can see, there are tons of extra leaves that came off um, perfectly fine. I know some people actually like some of these leaves and they like how crispy they come out when they roast. So I don't feel like you need to throw it all away, um, but I am. So. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. I'm gonna bring my pan over so we can go ahead and drizzle our Brussels sprouts and season them with some salt and pepper. I lined my pan with parchment paper because I just like the way how it cooks better. So we're gonna go ahead and pour it onto the pan. Now, because I'm not using my conventional oven, I'm gonna be using my regular oven. Um, I'm definitely gonna spread these out more evenly. I'm really excited to try this recipe because I was reading the reviews on it and it got 
high kid approve ratings. So very excited. I'm gonna grab my olive oil. As you can see, there's a lot of room in between the Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit of olive oil as such. I'm gonna use my hands to get dirty. Move it all around so it all gradually get coated with this olive oil. And then we're gonna sprinkle some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna toss these bad boys in the oven once it reaches 425, which my oven has not achieved that goal yet. As you can see, some of the leaves did come off. Not a big deal. I'm gonna leave them on there for some of that crunchiness because they are really good from that one time that I did it with the honey on the stove top. And I'm also gonna flip them to where the part that was cut the half like this up, that way those get a nice crunch because that is what the pitcher looks like. And the goal here is if it doesn't taste good to make it look good, right? So hopefully we can achieve both of them. But I'm just flipping them right up. And then once we finish flipping all of these bad boys, we're gonna add some salt and pepper. And I might get lucky with the oven. If not, we'll go ahead and move on to the chicken. No big deal. We got this. So yeah, really hoping the family likes these Brussels sprouts because it's always a win when your family eats very good veggies. Okay, so we're going to sprinkle some salt and pepper. Let me go get that. Okay, so we got the salt and we got the pepper. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. This actually has a um, amount. I'm supposed to do half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of uh, pepper, but I honestly just don't feel like measuring that out right now. But if you want to, go ahead and do that. Again, that was half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth of a teaspoon for um, pepper. Okay, I'm gonna put these to the side, wait for the oven to heat up, and then we're gonna start prepping our chicken. Okay, so our oven actually heated up at 425 right as soon as I turned you off. So I'm going to go ahead and put our Brussels sprouts in the oven real quick. nice in the middle all right now let's start prepping our chicken okay so we're gonna go ahead and start prepping this lemon piccata chicken when you work with chicken I'm really OCD and I like to trim if there's any excess fat this specific chicken looks really good um, for this recipe if you don't already have chicken breasts that are already thinly sliced. Um, what you can do is get your whole chicken breast, cut it in half, pound it down to about one inch thickness. What that looks like, I would say, looks like we got two chicken breasts right there. It's about like that. So that's one. We have a very little one right here. Here's our other chicken breast. Um, sometimes they have like that alien skin on them. Definitely just peel that off as well. Wow, I'm getting really lucky with these chicken breasts. Looks good. This one has a little bit of that fat that I'm going to remove right here. We're gonna cut some of that off. So I'm just gonna slice it away. Bye bye. Move that to the side. So as you can see, I already bought them thinly sliced. It saves so much time. I have um, more fat that I'm going to remove. Once you go ahead and finish prepping your chicken, we are going to um, sprinkle some salt and pepper on there. Then we're going to measure some almond flour and tapioca flour. Tapioca flour is also called tapioca starch. I had to Google that. So um, don't freak out if yours just says starch. It's 
the same thing. So we got all of our chicken ready. So let's go ahead and measure out our coating for this chicken. I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse my hands and start dreading these chicken. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start using this bowl and we are going to add the almond flour and the tapioca starch. So for this, you need three tablespoons of almond flour. I am using the HEB brand almond flour. I never doubt anything that is an HEB brand because they do such a very good job on their quality of food and drinks. And their Dr. Pepper um, is Dr. B. It is very close to the actual Dr. Pepper. So when it comes to their other stuff, like their beans, baracho, charo, refried, whatever it is, the fajitas, it's all really, really good. So if you're in Texas and you have an H-E-B near you, definitely try out their products. Not only are they good in quality, but they're good on the wallet too. So for the tapioca starch, we're going to add two tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, if yours is tapioca starch, it's the same thing as tapioca flour, according to what I read on the internet. So hopefully that we can actually believe. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a fork and I'm gonna mix that in. And as you can tell, this is going to be a lightly breaded chicken. The ingredients that I'm using are definitely keto friendly, Whole30 friendly. Um, so if you're on any of those diets or lifestyle changes, this meal is perfect for you, as well as the Brussels sprouts. Definitely Whole30 friendly and keto. So stick with me, you'll be skinny. Alrighty, so as you can see, this is nicely blended. Everything is mixed well together. So it is ready to be drenched. Let's go ahead and sprinkle some salt and pepper on the chicken so we can season that. Move these back over. Didn't do a very good job arranging them on my um, cutting board. Let me move this down just a little, just a little bit. Alrighty. And for the chicken, I'm just gonna use regular salt and regular ground black pepper. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Hey, princess. That's my Evie. She's here today, guys. <laughs> they can't see, you gotta squat because they're seeing what I'm doing right now. What's up, that's Eddie. She's my mini May. Well, we are making lemon chicken bacata with honey balsamic versus spice. <laughs> um, all right, so we did our salt. Oh, I gotta flip it. You're making me lose concentration. <laughs> Teenagers. She's so cute. She just woke up, guys. Must be nice. And that's my husband. That's how we talk to our daughter, our teenage daughter, if you were able to hear that. <laughs> you gotta talk to them in a baby voice. They like it. Okay, so everything is sprinkled. We are all set there. So let's go ahead and add two tablespoons to our skillet. Then we'll come over here, bread the chicken, add it to the skillet, and we'll be all set. All right, so we are over here, about to add the oil. It's one, two, woo, so bam. So two tablespoons of canoil oil. Um, that was my substitute for ghee butter. That is the new thing. So what we are going to do is dip the chicken 
into the flour tapioca mix. And we're going to um, place the chicken into the skillet. So as you can see, I'm just making sure it's completely coated. This is a very light coating. So shake off any excess um, chicken you might have. And then once you're done frying it, again, anytime you cook, it is essential to use paper plates. You don't have any of that fancy stuff here. Alrighty. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. So as you fry them, you're gonna wanna do it for four minutes on each side is what I was instructed. I'm actually just gonna do it to where it's lightly browned. And again, this is on medium high heat. Something else that I didn't say because I completely forgot was um, the bushel spout. You're gonna put them in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. So depending on how long they've been on the oven, minus that, plus add that to your timer. So I did like 13 minutes and then we'll check it out. If they need to be in there longer, we can always add more time. And again, right now we are just lightly breading the chicken with the almond flour tapioca starch mix. I'm really excited for this. We haven't had lemon chicken piccata, I would say in about two years at our household for sure. It's been a while. So again, four minutes on each side. Usually you can tell is the outside of the chicken turns into a certain color when you need to flip it. So what we're looking for is a lightly golden brown color. And I'm not noticing that we've achieved that yet. Move my pan a little bit because it looked like all the oil was on one side. Get your tongs ready to do the work. So, I don't know how many moms I have out there that are potty training their toddlers. It has been this ongoing battle that we've been doing with our toddler. And we've had to be very careful with this one because she has a kidney reflex. So last year around this time, um, she was in the hospital for about a good five days because I felt so guilty. It was right around the time we started potty training. Um, but we have a success and last night, for the second time, she didn't go pee in her diaper. She woke up, went to the potty, that diaper was dry. So Peppa Pig to the rescue, we ran to Target, got her a surprise, so hopefully she still stays motivated. Okay, I think we got about a minute right now. This is what we have. It's not officially brown. Starting to get there. No problem. Check the other one. Yeah, we're not there yet. So, moms, if you guys are having a hard time and thinking your kid is never going to get potty trained like I was, it will happen. I swear. And it was like she got it, and the next day was like she had no idea how to do it. So frustrating. I just kept telling myself, my last one, my last one. I can do this, mom. All right, again, so we are heating these chickens at a medium high temperature. I'm using my cast iron that way, hopefully, we get a really pretty color. Oh, look at that. Let me see if you guys can see that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Uh, this side needs a little bit longer. That is such a pretty color. I'm so happy with that. That's like Olive Garden, Caraba quality color. That is what you're looking for here today. So let's see. Look at that. Okay. 
beautiful color they got going on there. I haven't put it yet. Look at that. What they're looking for. Get some other oil on there. All right, so we flipped it again. Four minutes on each side is what the instruction says. We are right now about to approach six minutes, so I'm probably gonna give this chicken patty one more minute, and this one is probably about a minute and thirty seconds. Because as long as you got one side pretty, who cares what the other side looks like? And we don't want to overcook the chicken. So once we get these two out, we'll put them on the plate and then we'll continue with our other chicken breast. So I'm going to go ahead, pause it, finish my chicken breast, and then we'll come right back to you. Okay, so I'm working on my last chicken. My timer went off on my Brussels sprouts. They kind of don't really look caramelized yet, um, except for the individual leaves. So I'm going to leave them in there for about another three to four more minutes. I'm also going to take them out and drizzle a little bit more olive oil on it. All right. So give me just a second to do that. Okay. So I took them out. Um, oops. And I'm going to take out some of these burnt crisps. As you can see, the individual leaves definitely come out more, um, more crispy, really crispy. So if you didn't want to waste any of them, you could probably put them in now and not have a problem. And the chicken is coming out good. I also um, had to add a little bit more canola oil when it came to doing the rest of my, my, um, when it came to the rest of my breading of the chicken. So I did another like three more tablespoons because we needed it for the rest of the chicken. I'm on the last piece of chicken right now. Um, when that is done, we're gonna come over here, cut some onions and finish off this lemon chicken piccata because we are almost done. Alrighty, so I added a little bit more olive oil. I'm gonna pop this back in the oven, flip over my chicken and then we're gonna cut some onions. See you in a little bit. Okay, so with the small onion, this was the smallest I can find. I think it's too big, so I'm gonna cut it in half, save the other half, and um, chop up this one. So we'll put this in a Ziploc bag. And then um, cut the ends. And then we will peel whatever is easiest, whatever comes off. For me, looks like I'm gonna have to do that first little layer. There we go. Move that over here. And so we're gonna chop. So I don't know if you guys know the secret to getting a chopped onion without having the water work is slightly going down, not all the way. You're gonna do that across your onion. time Oop, that went all the way down so the reason you don't want to go all the way down is because it's whole it keeps its shape then you're gonna rotate it 90 degrees and then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side and then you already got it chopped without having to cry a lot As you can see, now it's starting to loosen up. You see? Nice chopped onion. Okay, I'm gonna go check on the chicken and then um, we'll definitely add some more canola oil and then the onion to the pan to saute. See you in a little bit. Okay, now we're back over here. You need to add the remaining of your ghee, which is three, um, it was a total of three tablespoons. So you just need to add the remainder one tablespoon. Then what you're going to do is you're going to also change your heat to medium-low. 
add your onions to the skillet. And then we're going to cook these until they're translucent. I didn't do any type of cleaning to the pan. We definitely want those um, chicken juices that are on the pan to come up. So just lightly scrape the bottom of your pan to release those juices. And I'm just going to remove this chunk that didn't chop up all the way. Okay, once these become translucent, we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. I cheat and I already buy my garlic already pre-cut in um, mice form. So that's what I'm going to use. If you don't have that and you actually have garlic, you need four cloves of garlic, chopped up or mice, whatever you prefer, sorry. I'm removing these big chunks of onion that didn't chop. Okay, our onions are almost at that stage where they're translucent. So let me go ahead and get my garlic ready. So when you buy them pre-made or pre-cut, it tells you half a teaspoon is approximately one clove. So if that's the case, we would need four of these. You definitely want to make sure your onions are really cooked because garlic takes no time whatsoever. So I'm going to give that a few more minutes. Have my garlic ready. Um, what we're going to need right after the garlic is we're going to need our chicken bone broth, our lemon juice. We're going to add that to the pan after our garlic is set. So because the garlic cooks so fast, I'm going to go ahead and start prepping for that to be poured in. And so for your chicken bone broth, you need one cup, which this is one cup, so I don't need a measure. And then for the lemon juice, it just says one lemon fully squeezed. So I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic, two, three, four. Go ahead and get that all mixed in. It smells so good. And all we really did was cook onion and chicken, onion and garlic. Okay, again, the garlic takes no time. So I'm gonna get my um, bone broth. I'm gonna pour that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze my lemon in. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this to a medium heat. We need to wait for this to get to a boil. And then once it reaches that boil, we want it to stay there for three minutes. Oops, some of the lemon came out. Don't know if you guys saw that. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and stir that in. You do wanna stir constantly. So this ingredient, um, it calls for a coconut cream. So if you cannot find actually cream of coconut, which is what this is, um, you can buy a can of coconut, put it in the refrigerator overnight. And the part that's, when you open it up, the part that's really thick, 
is going to be the cream and the bottom part actually when you when you open the can you can pour out all the milk and everything else that's in the can will be the cream um, you can do that I didn't want to have to deal with that so I bought it already in the form of the cream version so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up and it's very solid so I'm just gonna mix it to where it um, liquefies a little bit with the fork Still just mixing this coconut cream. Blending it. As you can see, it's liquefied. So if you're not on a diet, you can definitely use flour and then instead of coconut cream, I would assume you could use a heavy cream. So looks like we got about a few more minutes of this reducing some of the acid from the lemon. So I don't know about you guys, but my is not clear. It has some of the brown from the chicken when we were um, threading it and frying it in there. So it doesn't look like it's going to look pretty. Maybe the cream will um, help with that. You can also add, um, with the cream, a stone ground mustard. I'm not gonna use stone ground mustard. I will use a little bit of mustard uh, because I feel like mustard does cook very well. And the mustard that I'm going to use is a honey deli kind of style. So for the coconut cream, you're going to need half a cup. So, let me get that. Let me measure that out. Gonna pour that in. And then if you decide to use mustard, you're supposed to use one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to use three fourths, which is half of that. You can definitely smell the aroma of the coconut and I'm not big on coconut. Not at all. Sorry, I'm getting the uh, honey Dijon mustard. Okay, so I got my mustard and I'm gonna do, that's half a tablespoon and half of that, which is three fourths. And then I'm gonna mix that in. I'm really curious what it does to the flavor. Just waiting for that to go into the sauce. Having a hard time dissolving. So we'll just keep working with it. We're supposed to cook this for about a minute. Then after a minute, we're supposed to add the capers. The amount of capers that you're supposed to add is one fourth a cup. All I got was juice on the capers. I'm draining it. Okay, that's about one fourth. Adding that. We need 
you to cook these for about a minute. Once this cooks, then we will um, add the chicken. Once we add the chicken, then um, we'll leave the chicken in there for about a minute. I'm just gonna pick up my mess a little bit. Cause oh, I got a lot going on right now. Okay, I wasn't sure if you missed me. So, um, before we put the chicken in, what we're gonna do is just wanna show you what it looks like. Isn't it so pretty, the color? I don't know if you guys can see how golden brown it is, but it's a really pretty color. We're gonna put that in there, let it cook for a minute, and then we're gonna go ahead and start plating, all right? In the pan, and if, so we got the chicken in the pan, and if you really wanna know how raw this is, is I completely forgot about our Brussels sprouts. So our Brussels sprouts here, they are definitely nice and cooked and brown. I'll probably remove the, the the first layer of each one of them and then I'll go ahead and deal with the balsamic and honey and we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so this is what they look like right now, really brown. I removed one of them and they look kind of like the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in this bowl once I remove my overcookedness. Yay, Brussels sprouts. We can fix it. They do feel nice and crispy, which is really exciting. So what I did with my chicken is I turned the uh, stove off. So it's just there simmering in the liquid. So hopefully it produces a lot of flavor as I fix my mess with these Brussels sprouts. I forgot to put a timer on for the Brussels sprouts when I didn't think they were cooked enough. Well, Christina, can't complain now. They are cooked very well. Hey, it happens. That's why it's called hanging with Chrissy. Because guess what? I ain't perfect. Some of these look really good, actually. I almost want to just put one in my mouth. I don't know if there's any saving this special sprout. <laughs> we'll throw it in there. My kids probably won't eat it because they don't like anything that's dark, that looks burnt. Even though if you tell them it's supposed to be that way, they're not dumb. <laughs> All right, we're almost done salvaging these. Repurposing our Brussels sprouts. God, they're hot. Whoa, Boom. just took them out the oven. All right, some of them, it's just doing the work for me. The funny thing is, is they're actually supposed to look like this color, but I haven't even put the balsamic vinegar on it, so. You can just hear how crispy they are. Hey princess, dinner's almost ready. All right, so. Oh, I have one more. That one's fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add the balsamic vinegar and the honey to the Brussels sprouts and we're gonna toss them in there. Sir, let me get my measuring cups that I left over here. Okay, so we need three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar Yes, princess? Yes, you can have a yogurt for dinner. Two, whoops. Three. Dinner's right now, sweetheart. And then um, two tablespoons, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of honey. So I got my honey, just gonna pour it in there. And 
and FYI, you're supposed to mix the balsamic vinegar and the honey together. Oops, didn't do that. So we'll see how this comes out. It's probably not the best example for you guys. And that's what they look like. I'll make it nice and pretty in a little bit. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and plate the food and let you guys know what we think of the meal. Okay, so this is what they pretty much look like plated. What I did with some of the leaves that were burnt is I tasted one and they actually had a really good taste. So to give the Brussels sprouts more texture, I sprinkled some of those extra leaves onto each plate. And um, for the kids, I'm gonna cut up their chicken for them but just to show you what it looks like.